Joe Rogan is a podcaster, award-winning commentator, comedian, actor, and former TV presenter. While he is now a star globally and often seen as the face of the UFC. I'm here with the winner, Conor McGregor. Conor! With a long journey to the big time that includes a number of struggles and opportunities that Rogan initially was sceptical about. Let's take a look at how he did it. Joseph James Rogan was born in Newark, New Jersey in August 1967, less than five days after the city had been through five days of race riots. His father, Joseph, was a police officer and his mother, a free spirit. They divorced when Joe was five due to his father's violent outbursts, causing a young Joe to have an unstable childhood, last seeing his father at the age of six and learning early on that you can't always rely on people. He moved with his mother to San Francisco, Florida, and then Massachusetts. By the age of eight, Rogan was smoking joints with his stepfather, and he suffered from anxiety at school and a lack of confidence, struggling to speak to people. However, he soon discovered martial arts after a boy put him in a headlock at the age of 14, and he became very interested in the sport, which gave him a break from real life. Rogan later recalled that he was terrified of being a loser and this sport was the first that gave him the feeling that he would not become one. Although he had other hobbies that included baseball, Rogan became obsessed with martial arts, showing himself in the ring with high future potential. As the sport took over his life, Rogan admits that he barely got through school, with a C-grade average with the only subject he enjoyed being art. He initially planned to become an illustrator, then he picked up karate, kickboxing and taekwondo, which soon consumed most of his time. Rogan improved quickly in the martial arts world, with his teacher often putting him up against black belts. He soon had his own black belt and won the US Open Lightweight Championship when he was only 19. It looked like Rogan had a promising career and he went on to become a four-time state champion. However, at the age of 21, Rogan began to get severe headaches from martial arts and he gave up to focus on his health. After graduating high school, he never had a full-time job, only working part-time as he focused on pursuing martial arts. Rogan later admitted that he couldn't hold down a real job, describing it like poison when he took construction jobs, and he felt that they were killing him. After being forced to stop martial arts, Rogan needed a new career, so he signed up at the University of Massachusetts, but soon realised studying wasn't for him thinking about martial arts and stand-up comedy rather than his studies. Rogan's gym training partners convinced him to try stand-up comedy as they found his jokes and style of delivery entertaining and he did his first gig six months later in 1998 at the Stitches Comedy Club. Comedy soon became his new passion and he dropped out of university to pursue it. While he worked on his stand-up, Rogan also taught martial arts and delivered newspapers, drove taxis, worked on construction sites and even helped a private investigator for a time. After two years, he was spotted by talent manager Jeff Sussman and moved to New York to become a full-time comedian in 1990. While he didn't work on any of Sussman's projects, it would help launch Rogan's career into television. The only problem was that he wasn't making any money, living in his grandfather's apartment to make ends meet. He then moved to Los Angeles in 1994 and made his first TV appearance on an MTV comedy show Half Show Comedy Hour, and the network offered him an exclusive contract. Rogan turned it down and took a rival deal from Disney. Rogan's obsession with stand-up led to his first real acting role on the sitcom Hardball in 1994, and he starred in a dozen films which were shown on Fox. Whilst filming, Joe joined the Mitzi Shaw Club and performed at the club for free. A number of other acting roles followed, while continuing to do stand-up on the side. Rogan didn't like how repetitive acting was, but it paid his rent and allowed him to pursue his real passions. By 1997, he was working for the UFC as a backstage and post-fight interviewer after he received a phone call asking him to become a journalist for the organisation. Rogan initially thought the call was a joke, but took the job and continued to film TV and his own shows alongside it. However, he stopped working for the UFC only two years later as the salary couldn't cover his travel costs. MMA as a sport was only beginning to gain traction and paying travel for UFC staff was a luxury the company could not afford. 
In order to make money, he released his first comedy special, The Joe Rogan. The success of the show saw him approach to host the game show Fear Factor in 2001, but he initially refused, with Sussman convincing him to accept. Rogan later admitted that he only accepted in order to witness funny scenes which he could use in his own show performances. The Fear Factor would go on to make Rogan a household name and significantly boost the crowd who attended his shows. Rogan later admitted that he would present each show high and on occasions would forget how to speak properly. Fear Factor aired on NBC from 2001 to 2006 and was subsequently relaunched in 2011 and 2016. When the UFC was bought out by Zufa in 2001, Rogan was brought back and offered the chance to become a commentator by its new president, Dana White. Rogan initially declined as he wanted to go to fights for entertainment and drink, but was later persuaded by White to commentate in order to get free tickets for him and his friends. He initially interviewed fighters and admitted he was very nervous when he first started. Rogan has been quick to take opportunities to boost his presence and started the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which now has over 1,700 episodes after launching in December 2009, featuring guests such as Elon Musk, Bernie Sanders, Jordan Peterson, and a number of his friends discussing topics ranging from gun ownership to politics to quantum mechanics. Rogan initially co-hosted with comedian Brian Redpan, who was also the producer, until he was replaced by Jamie Vernon in 2013. The podcast has grown to be one of the most successful in the world, achieving 16 million downloads a month in October 2019, to now averaging around 11 million views and downloads per episode. By 2011, the podcast began to be broadcast on Sirius XM Radio, with Rogan's initial guests being fighters and people from the MMA industry. Invites to actors, scientists and politicians followed, and the podcast was moved to YouTube after the production of over 300 episodes in 2013. Rogan benefited from major broadcasters moving away from long-style interviews, which people wanted to hear at length. The most famous of these podcasts is episode 1169, filmed in 2018, featuring business magnate Elon Musk, who smoked a joint on the episode, drawing international attention to Rogan and the project. The episode now has 54 million views, and caused Tesla's share price to fall 9% after the episode was released. He later sold exclusive rights to his podcast to Spotify for a nine-figure sum in 2020, which some estimate the deal to be worth around $100 million. The full episodes of the podcast were initially available on YouTube before the Spotify deal, with highlights now uploaded for his subscribers to watch. He got into hot water in 2020 after spreading misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine suggesting that young, healthy people do not need to be vaccinated. The doctor who featured on the podcast had been banned from Twitter and compared the pandemic policies to the Holocaust and suggested COVID death figures had been exaggerated as hospitals received bonuses for reporting cases. A number of musicians removed their songs from Spotify in protest and subscribers also cancelled their subscription, pushing Spotify's share price down by over a third. Rogan initially recorded the podcast from an adjacent warehouse next to his Bell Canyon home in Los Angeles that sat in two acres. He sold the house in 2020 for $3.45 million and relocated to Texas, highlighting overcrowding and more social freedoms. It is also reported that taxes played a role in the move. Joe Rogan's success is down to taking the opportunities available to him, with a persistence that has seen him become a star not only in the United States, but around the world. Dana White, the UFC president, has attributed much of the UFC's growth to Rogan, focusing on his passion for the sport and his ability to keep viewers entertained throughout the fight.